Shalom everyone, Ty Green here. I was taking another look at 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3 to see where this fits in with the sequence of events. Months ago, we've connected the peace and safety or security all throughout the proposed peace plan and the Abraham Accords. And I believe we're looking in the right area as it does involve the woman, Israel, and the forthcoming expected confirming of the covenant with many of the Antichrist. But is the peace and safety portion of this verse connected to the proposed peace plan or something else? As we looked into this last year, many of us at that point believed that the Antichrist is revealed shortly after the rapture where he confirms the covenant with many. This is indeed true, yet when we examine this event with the peace and safety declaration, followed by an escape of some and not others, as we see it in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, it is revealed that if that escape is the rapture, then the peace and safety event may not be related to the peace plan. It may not. The confirmation of it is a post rapture event after the revealing of the antichrist right and we've all witnessed the documentation in the proposed peace plan and the abraham accords peace and safety peace and security throughout it it was even spoken a few times perhaps we need to take a second look into who they are that say peace and safety relative to the event of the great escape and the state of the world when it happens. As we look at this, we can connect who are they that say peace and safety. So let's get into the word of God and take a look at this part of the letter from Apostle Paul to the believers in Christ at Thessalonica. Let's pick it up at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Right away we can see that this is relative to the day of the Lord, the wrath of the Lamb. Then Apostle Paul notes a preceding event. Let's keep reading. Verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety... Then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. As we can see, they say peace and safety. There's an affiliation with the woman with child and they shall not escape. This appears to connect with Revelation 12 and 5 as this is the same woman in travail with child, which does give birth, and the child escapes. As opposed to verse 3, right here, where it notes that they shall not escape. See that? They shall not escape, but we see that the child of the woman in travail does. Look at this, Revelation 12 and 5. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. It's the same woman in travail with child. Then the child escapes in the harpazo. This is the representation of the body of Christ and the event of the rapture of the church. Remember, this child represents a group of people and the woman represents a group of people. The church is the child that came out of Israel from a physical group of people. Israel came a spiritual group of people, those in Christ, which will soon be born collectively into a physical non-corruptible body. Now, this is the birth of this child when the corruptible puts on incorruption and Mortality puts on immortality, as Apostle Paul explains in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. 
if this event was connected to the confirmation of the peace plan, the rapture could not happen afterwards as the covenant with many is confirmed by the Antichrist. And we know this from Daniel 9, 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. This is the post-rapture event that begins the 70th week. The escape of the child of the woman in travail occurs before the revealing of the Antichrist. So we can conclude that those that say peace and safety of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 represents a group of people and not a person in the form of the son of perdition, the Antichrist. And this is why it made so much sense last year as we watched the Abraham Accords, because we saw the woman, we saw the many, we saw the covenant proposed before the event of the Abraham Accords, and we heard and saw peace and safety throughout the documentation of the Abraham Accords event. So as we look again at the sequence of events prior to the rapture, we can identify who they are. In our text of 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, we can see a group of people declaring peace and safety. Then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. When we go back to Revelation 12 and 5 and the event of the child escaping, if we go back a few verses, we can identify another group of people in the form of a global government that has a threatening posture to the woman in travail and her child. Look at this. When we go to Revelation 12, we can see the woman in travail relative to a beast that is in a threatening position to devour the child that escapes as soon as it is born. Here we can identify who it is that says peace and safety. Let's look at verse 2 and 3. Revelation 12, verses 2 and 3. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. There's the woman in travail. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And there Satan, the dragon, in possession of having a beast with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Remember, the dragon does not have seven heads, but he is in possession of having a beast that does. Now, how do we know this? Scripture confirms scripture. We will define the dragon and then the description of the beast. Further down in Revelation 12, verse 9, the dragon is defined. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, this is after that war in the preceding verses. And Satan, the dragon, is in possession of having a beast. And we see the same with the description of this very same beast in the next chapter. It represents a group of people in a form of a government, but it received its power from Satan. The Apostle John records this in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the stand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. See that? The same beast. As we read further, we see the description of the beast. Note that the dragon and the beast are separate, and the dragon is in possession of it. 
Let's go to verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. See, they're separate. But the dragon is the one behind it. The point here is that this is a representation of a group of people in the form of a new world government that rises up, as we saw in Daniel chapter 7. So when we identify who they are that say peace and safety, we can see a clear group of people. So the woman in travail represents a physical group of people, Israel, from which came a spiritual group of people, both Jew and Gentiles in Christ, in the representation of a man-child. Then the beast represents a group of people in the form of a government. Can you see the distinction between us and them? They are the ones that say peace and safety. They will be in position before the woman in travail. They will be in position to devour the child as soon as it is born. Let's go to Revelation 12, verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it is born. Just to point out that this beast does a lot of devouring. Look at Daniel 7, verse 7. After this, I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Same chapter and book, verse 19. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others. Exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And with this, we can see how this is a group of people identified as a kingdom. What we would associate as a government. Verse 23, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So now as we look at who says peace and safety, we can see that they involve a group of people. One notable is that the United Nations may be a segment of this forthcoming fourth kingdom. Look at this. It appears that they've been saying peace and security for a long time, but they cannot say it as an accomplishment until they get what they want. And it will be relative to the woman in travail and the man child. So we will be watching for this. It's going to get a bit clearer in a moment. Part of the new world government will involve the United Nations. Look at this from their document. A resolution 75 and 1. In part 6 it says here strengthening international cooperation is in the interest of both nations and peoples. The three pillars of the United Nations, peace and security. See that? That's just the first one. And I believe this is connected to when they get what they want. They will say when they get it, peace and safety. And it will involve this new world government in Israel. Let's keep reading. The three pillars of the United Nations, peace and security. 
development, and human rights are equally important, interrelated, and interdependent. We have come far in 75 years, but much more remains to be done. We have the tools, and now we need to use them. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is our roadmap and its implementation a necessity for our survival. Urgent efforts are required. Therefore, we are not here to celebrate. We are here to take action guided by the purposes and principles of the Charter. We are here to ensure the future we want and the United Nations we need. So as we look at this develop, this points to the United Nations being a segment of the fourth kingdom. Some event appears to happen as they assert themselves and reaffirm one of their pillars, peace and security. And it will involve somehow Israel. And it will be after the event of Revelation 12 verse 4. It will be a bit clearer as we watch this unfold. Whatever it is seems to fall in the sequence after Revelation 12, 3 and 4 are physically manifested with some literal positioning in regards to Israel. She will be in travail, but before her time of trouble, they will say peace and safety and she will be delivered of a man child. What I'm suggesting is that this new world government of Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Daniel chapter 7 are they that say peace and safety. It may be in some response to something involving Israel. And in some way, whatever it is, we can see how this action is a threat to the body of Christ. We note in Revelation 12 that the child escapes then the dragon persecuted the woman. She is protected and then the dragon can't get to her. So he goes after the remnant of her seed, the remainder, the left behind the tribulation saints. When we go to Revelation 12, verse 13, we see this. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man child. And then further on in verse 17, we see, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we can see that there is a connection to persecution. So now let's move on to more identifiers of who this woman is. Isaiah 66 and 7, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. Now this bears repeating who the woman in travail is relative to a resurrection of those kept for a little moment while the inhabitants of the earth are punished for their iniquity. In this segment of scripture, details who the woman is and what happens afterwards. And it goes along with what we see in Revelation 12, Isaiah 26, 17 through 21. Like as a woman with child that draws near the time of her delivery is in pain and cries out in her pangs. So have we been in thy sight, O Lord. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, you that dwell in dust, for thy dew is as they do of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. See, after these folks are resurrected, they go somewhere for a bit of time, for a reason, until the indignation be overpassed. 
Let's go to the next verse, verse 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. See, this indignation means anger. In the Strong's Concordance, we see it connects with God's anger towards sin. See, in the lexicon, it says anger, indignation. But when we go further into the Strong's definitions, we see this strictly froth at the mouth. That is figuratively fury. And then it says, especially of God's displeasure with sin, angry, indignation, rage. And this connects with the next verse of Isaiah 26 verse 21 for behold the lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity see that the anger is connected to the sins the iniquity of the inhabitants of the earth the earth also shall disclose her blood it further says and shall no more cover her slain the punishing of the inhabitants of the earth involves death in this wrath. The penalty of sin and iniquity is death. And we see this in Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And look again, who's punishing the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity the Lord. See, for behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And notice that he's coming out of his place. Might that be the same place that he has prepared for us in heaven, in his father's house? Look at what the Lord says that's recorded in the book of John chapter 14. Starting at verse one, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. See, the Lord will come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. In Revelation 6, 14 through 17, we see this. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together in every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? The wrath of the lamb of God, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. See, there's a reason behind this. Go back to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. See, all about sin and wickedness from way back in the days of Noah. It grieves the Lord at his heart. So destruction came upon the world. And it will again, as in the days of Noah, except it will be over a course of years. There are those in the group of Isaiah 26 kept for a little while. 
in his chambers during this trial upon the earth. The Lord says in Revelation 3 verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. There's those inhabitants of the earth. As Israel, the non-believing Jews will be serving their 70th week, Jacob's trouble during this time of wrath upon the earth. But that's not appointed to us, those Jews and Gentiles that have obtained salvation by Jesus Christ. This brings us right back to the chapter where we began in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But let's look at verse 9 that speaks to this. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So now, rejoice or receive. Those that know Christ rejoice in this, knowing that we are not appointed to wrath. See, it's targeted. It's due to sin and iniquity. If you have not obtained salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, then I encourage you to receive, receive the gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus did die on the cross for our sins, and he was buried in and rose again on the third day. Just like scripture says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I encourage you to receive the gift of of salvation through Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I'll leave it here for now. You know I love you. Live holy before the Lord. Till we meet again, folks. Love y'all. Shalom. Shalom.